Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap morning session for Tuesday, March the 21st, 2017. This is our morning leap. This is where we do our pre-market analysis and trade plan setup. Uh, each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market, and then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and our four main hypotheses. Why do we create multiple hypotheses? We do this because we do not know what the market is going to do, but we create a plan for what the market could do, and then once the market shows us what it's doing, then we can execute on our plan and not have to build it on the fly. This is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking out, please send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com. Uh, there's no website. There's no blog. This is not a commercial venture. We do everything here live in the go-to, and then we do live trading and analysis during the course of the trading day. Please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of the future results in any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. Okay, taking a look at yesterday. Yesterday, our main hypothesis was an open auction out of range a move up into uh, the uh, uh, testing the day, the prior day low, Friday's low, and possibly a push up into the 76 and then finding initiative buyers and rotating down towards that target at 67.50 and then shopping around there and pushing down into that uh, naked uh, VPOC and naked close down in the uh, 62s. Our secondary hypothesis was an open auction uh, outer range, a move down into the uh, 67, 75 area, find responsive buyers, and then rotate up, chopping, uh, chopping inside of value, and then pushing up into uh, the 80s and uh, that main target above at uh, 93. Our third hypothesis was a rotational day fighting the uh, the range low from Friday and just going sideways. We kind of got a combination of uh, hypo 1 and hypo 3. And we basically, you know, we did go up and uh, and tag the, uh, the naked VPOC. You can see that this was a failed auction right here. We had set the IB. The IB was uh, uh, 75, 75. We had left that uh, naked uh, VPOC by one tick. They went up and took out that naked VPOC, and then they rolled over, and they came down, and then they fought the range low for most of the, uh, the uh, middle part of the afternoon se uh, session through lunch, etc. And then we had that, uh, that flush down to right to target 67.50. We had created a naked, we had created this, uh, let me just move this out of the way for a second. We had created that uh, <clears throat> zipper measured move. Uh, right here, we had that uh, zipper measured move that took our primary target down to the 6550. And this is a great example where we had the impulse wave down, they created the zipper right here, and then we got the continuation wave to the 61.8 to the primary target. And I want to talk about this because this is a perfect example of why the extended target, which is the 100% extension, is always a bonus. We always gear and consider that the, uh, the measured move is completed, and anything above, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 beyond that is a bonus. So just a good example, and we went right to the 61, and then they rotated us back up. Now, we do have a zipper measured move set up. Let me just uh, delete these drawings here. We just set a, uh, another zipper up with this move overnight. I mean, the market just doesn't want to go down. Uh, you know, even though value keeps coming down and the VPOC keeps uh, drifting down, these buyers keep stepping in. So if take the, uh, the uh, beginning of the impulse wave up into the zipper. This is a two-point, uh, not a three-point, uh, you know, Fibonacci extension. I know it's not uh, the way usually people do it, but this is uh, this is what I've been doing for a while. Hold on one second. 
Okay, and our new zipper measured move is now up here at the 8075 as a primary and uh, 84 as a extended. And that will remain valid until we get back below 68. And uh, a move below 68 will invalidate this zipper measured move, but uh, uh, we do have one. And this is creating uh, a pretty nice zipper. Uh, so going back, I just wanted to point that out. And then basically, you know, we chopped around. We, you know, we failed at that, uh, that uh, 70 area. Remember that the 7050 yesterday was our over underline, came up, came down, hit the zipper measured move, and then the buyer stepped in late in the day and rotated us up, failed off of the range low at uh, 72, 75, got within one tick, and then basically came down to that 70 and went sideways into the close. Uh, looking at news today, uh, we just had uh, Canadian core retail sales and uh, uh, retail sales month over month. They both came out with a beat, and the current, uh, U.S. current account also came out as a beat as well. So uh, good news coming into the day. Uh, 9 a.m., we have CB leading index coming out of China and uh, New Zealand uh, as tentative GDP, uh, GDP price index. And then there's really... No other scheduled news uh, for the day, uh, except maybe headline news. So one of the things I always do every morning is I start my day with a simple candlestick chart. Uh, I start on a monthly. I use a 9 EMA, 20 SMA. What I'm looking for is slope and separation for the strength of the trend, where the trend is being challenged or violated, any candlestick pa patterns. Uh, that might pop out and I work my way from the macro to the micro uh, monthly you know multi-year strong trend good slope good separation challenge at the end of 15 beginning of 16 they take it back they come up and then they created we talked about this while it was happening the rising three pattern which is a continuation pattern that's a large uh, green candle three red candles and then engulfing uh, bullish engulfing gave us our continuation. We got good slope and separation. We go in and we put in a new all-time high at 2401, adjusted to 2398 on the uh, on the June contract. The trend does not even get close to getting challenged on the monthly until we get into the mid 2200s. Going to the weekly, same thing. Great slope, great uh, separation. We were one time framing up. Okay, higher lows uh, for like six weeks. And then we put in that, uh, uh, that uh, red week uh, two weeks ago, which violated the one-time framing. And you know, we put in a week low here at the 54, uh, but we're basically creating possibly a flag formation. Uh, the trend does not even get challenged until we get down into the 2343. We still have that gap below us in the 46 area. Uh, to, to close up. There's a lot of repair we've got to do, but this market just doesn't want to come down and repair it yet. Uh, they keep Buyers keep coming in and buying it up. Uh, so the trend is still up on the weekly. On the daily, you know, we had that upward trend. We get the FUBAR, okay, creating the blow off top. The inside bar, Mr. Sneaky, creating the technical gap against the nine. We come down, we close that gap, and then we've been going sideways. And you can see that we're getting a uh, MA squeeze, MA hug. This is a decision point. We either bounce from here and get continuation, or they come down, violate the trend, and start a possible downward trend. But for now, right now, we're in a sideway consolidation. Uh, you can see we've got a little bit of a symmetrical uh, triangle, and we need to wait for which way it's going to break before we know the direction of the possible trend. On the uh, four hour, we basically basically have been in this consolidation. Uh, yesterday uh, in the RTH, they, uh, they broke it below and then they bought it back up overnight and we're currently in between the nine and the 20 and going sideways in a sideways consolidation. The one hour, uh, we are starting to get a bit of a uh, upward trend. We've got separation, not really too much slope yet, but right now they're holding above the 9 and the 20 and uh, getting a possibly uh, start of another upward trend on the uh, one hour. On the 30-minute consolidation, uh, we're going sideways. We're below the 9 and the 20, so we do have uh, you know some uh, some possible uh, 
uh, move to the downside and the part, uh, start of a downward trend. Same thing on the, uh, the 15 minute. We're below the 9 and the 20 right now. Possible down, start of a downward. And uh, on the 5 minute, again, just this consolidation. So there's no real, on the larger time frames, we're still in an upward trend. On the smaller time frame, as we move down, it's less clear and we're in more of a consolidation. We do have this weak low, uh, you know, down here. Uh, overnight uh, at the 7350 uh, our overnight low is actually 68 you know we had that big move uh, both on gold and on uh, on the uh, on the ES they have nice move up and we've created this uh, this weak local low right now at the 7350 and there's a couple areas that I'm going to be watching moving over to the uh, to the composite, composite chart and the large picture structure just to put it in, into context for those that uh, uh, are just uh, visiting right now we created this you know long-term consolidation pattern in balance we create this uh, price acceptance at the 62 level and they break out they create the three-day island top with price acceptance trying to be held at 86.50 they can't hold it we gap down what do we do we come down pick up late buyers down here at the uh, 62 area except price a little bit higher outside of the balance uh, zone the value area and then we gap up consolidate accept that price that we tried to uh, tried to hold prior at the 86 and then we gap up and go into price discovery gap up price discovery gap up price discovery gap up two-day consolidation at the uh, at the 19 level continuation three-day price acceptance at the 40 level and then we gap up and since we've gapped up okay since the 21st okay we created this balance area uh, with a value area high at 77 and a quarter value area low at 54 uh, 75 our most traded price since the 21st of February is at the 2360 and then we you know we come up here we accept that price gap up put the blow off top up trying to hold value right here in around the this, this little profile shouldn't be here uh, try to hold value at the 77 75 78 area we can't what do we do we come down pick up late buyers they test the lower side of value uh, we uh, you know, accept price higher, 67.75, and then what do we do? We get the continue, continuation pattern back up into value, and we're trying to hold value right now back up in the 75 to 77 level. And yes, you know, we've had three days of downward uh, trend. We uh, viol violated the one time framing up. Now we're starting to one time frame down. We're creating a triple distribution with the three price acceptance areas at 77.75, 67.50, and 60, with uh, areas of price rejection at 70.50, 81 and a quarter, and 68.75. Uh, this is shifted down. This was our uh, uh, our 60. I'm sorry, 63.75. This was at 64.50, and you can see that the low uh, from yesterday at 65.50. I'm actually going to be using that or push down into the uh, 60s. If we uh, go to the uh, the daily, and let me just switch this to a 30 minute, you can see that we are getting lower uh, lower uh, VPOX on the daily, daily, so value is coming down, okay? And we're seeing some weakness, but we come down to the 65. We one tick. Uh, the uh, the fifteenth, okay, which was last Wednesday, uh, which was our Fed day. What do we do? We one ticket, get a failed auction below the RTH low at sixty five. And so far in the Globex, we've come up into the twenty three seventy four seventy five. Our high overnight is seventy six seventy five. So we came up and uh, basically, you know, have tested both sides of yesterday's uh, range. So moving over to the Globex. Globex opened at the uh, at the 7050. That was our uh, our over underline yesterday. They dipped down to the 68 <coughs> and inventory is net positive overnight. 
with value shifting back up into the 74. So if we get below, we have this double distribution zone in the overnight where the LVN starts around 72, 75, and we have this thin area down at 71. So if we break that 72, we could come through and chop through this and come down and test that 70.50 and again. And if we get below 70.50, then the longs are going to get caught in the hole and we could see a flush further. Uh, but again, this market is, uh, is showing some real strength right now. So taking a look at our, whoops, other way around, taking a look at our overnight and moving our numbers over to set up our trade plans, uh, our overnight high, 76.75, just uh, above yesterday's range high, our overnight low, 68. Didn't quite get down to the low uh, from the RTH, but came close. And then our VPOC overnight is not likely to shift. It's 74 and a quarter, which is basically at our value area high. And then the uh, LVN zone starts at uh, 72. Uh, and that's right near the open. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, just near the uh, the open and the range low from Friday. So I'm going to be using this area as a uh, a trade level. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need this and expand this out. All right, so setting up our levels. Uh, we're currently going to open up just inside a range, uh, you know, and possibly just outside of value. I can't use the value area. I'm going to use the range low from Friday and the open from yesterday because if we stay above the open from yesterday, I'm looking for continuation up and back up into uh, value, uh, which we were failed to, uh, to hold. We got in there and then they had that one tick failed auction. So I'm going to be using the 76 as a trade level. Above that, I'm looking for them to take out the overnight high and come up to this main target above, which is the 77.75 and the microcomposite VPOC that we tried to hold on the blow off uh, high. And then uh, above that, I've got the range uh, uh, high from Friday and the uh, daily ATR. Our 20 period daily ATR right now is continuing to come down. It's still below 1488, uh, 15. It's at 1488. So off of the low overnight of 68, uh, our upside daily ATR range target is up here at 82. Uh, off of the overnight high, which of course, you know, we still could, uh, we're only trading uh, a point and a half off of it, so we could uh, actually go up. We still have 30 minutes to go, but currently right now, our daily downside ATR off of the current uh, Globex high is down here at 2260. So we have range capabilities of coming up into that key target above and back up into this balance, and we have range capabilities to come down and take out this naked VPOC and, uh, and naked close down here in the 62s. So uh, just keep that in mind that this is all well within our ranges. Above the levels still uh, remain the same. Above 82, I'm going to be targeting that 84.50. That's the range from the, uh, the range high from Thursday. And then above that, I'm going for the, uh, the 80, 88.50. Oh, I already got it there, so just have to move it up one. And then above that, it's all about this, uh, this 93. Uh, let's look at our week uh, range. So far right now, our low on the week, our low on the week is... 65.50. Our 20 period daily, our weekly ATR is 40.80. Ah, come on. 23. 65.50 plus 40.80. 24.06.30 is our weekly ATR. So we have range capabilities to coming up uh, uh, into the 2400 still this week. 
and remember that we have an unadjusted unequalized high between the June and the March contract, this is generally equalized at some point in time. Whether it's done, you know, this week or, or you know, in the future, I don't know. It's just something we have range capabilities right now based on our 20 period weekly. Uh, I know this is getting uh, busy, but uh, there's a lot going on up here. Okay, so levels below. Uh, we have the value area low at the 68, but I'm actually going to be watching, I'm sorry, the 69.50. I'm going to be watching the IB low at 69, and I'm going to encompass the 68.75. This is an area that Marvin is uh, watching, so I want to make sure that I basically take out the overnight low for continuation down to the 65s. And then below 65 is the key target, and the main target below is down here at the 62.75. So we are still one timing down for the for the last three days. So what is my uh, my high hypothesis? Well, we're coming up to test the uh, oops, we're coming up to uh, test the uh, the uh, overnight Globex high. So we're likely going to try to probably do another we've been doing this a lot we've been doing a making uh, a make and break uh, on the globex highs and lows but my main hypothesis today you know it's kind of equal and i want to i want to i want to really uh emphasize this because of the fact that we keep getting the strong buying coming in down in that 65 area I give equal weight to my hypo one and hypo two, but because we're one time framing down, okay, uh, now I'm going to be watching to see if we uh, if we uh, you know violate the one time framing with a move above the 76 and the takeout of that uh, overnight high. But my main hypothesis right now is an open auction just in range, a push up into the uh, 79 area to the 80. Uh, area finding responsive sellers and then rotating us down and coming down back into value back into balance around that 70 and taking out this naked VPOC chopping around here and possibly pushing through to the uh, 65 and taking the 65 out and coming down into the 62 it's all with the, it's all within our daily range uh, so that's hypo one hypo two is an open auction in range, a push down into the 70, possibly into the 68, 75 area, but finding responsive buyers and rotating us up into Friday, okay, coming back into value, chopping around here and pushing up towards the 82 and closing somewhere between the 82 and the 78 area and coming right back into this balance up here. Hypo 3 is a balanced day chopping between the 7875 and the 70 area and just going sideways fighting the range high from yesterday kind of opposite of what we did on hypo 3 yesterday where we are chopping around the uh, the 78 and the 67 area and fighting the low this time I'd be looking to fight the high and get this overlapping value and then hypo 4 is an open test drive failure to get below the 72 finding, uh, having an open test drawing, finding buyers, and then pushing us up and getting a trend day up into the 88 area, chopping around between 88 and 82, and then pushing up into this 93 and closing somewhere in the, in the mid-90s, possibly getting a push into the, uh, the 24s. But it's highly unlikely we'll get into the 24s today. And then there's going to be an alternative fifth hypo today because of, uh, uh, of the fact that we could get a complete take back day at uh, turnaround Tuesday, okay, and an open auction in range, failure to break out of range or a false breakout, finding strong responsive sellers, pushing right down through to chop between the 68 and 66, 65.50, and then failure down to the 62s, chop here, and then push through and come closer down towards, and this is no longer critical mass, uh, coming back down here 
towards the uh, the mid 50s in that uh, 47. We have this gap zone that we left down here, uh, down in the 46. Let me just bring my uh, flex levels up. Where are my flex levels? There they are. <clears throat> so we still have this gap zone down here that is left open, and we need to come down and, uh, and attack it from above. Uh, down in the mid of the gap is at uh, 47.75. The actual gap is down here at the naked close at 46. Uh, so we still have that as a, a target below and needing for repair. So that's my analysis and main hypo. Gold, you know, yesterday our main hypothesis was, uh, was uh, a rotational day in balance between the 27 and the 34. And what did we do? We, you know, chopped around between our low was... Uh, our low was 20, what, 28, 2880, and our high was 3550. We rejected that 36, and then we came up and rejected that 36 again. Uh, the key level right now is we're in this uh, flag formation uh, and balance uh, in around the, uh, the 28, 29 area. Uh, key level, if we get above this 36, then I'm looking for a price discovery up into the 40 area. We have that naked uh, VPOC on the, uh, on the daily uh, at the 1240 area. It's a CHVN. It's 39. Resistance comes in at 4270. If we get above the 42, uh, 4270, it's going to be a move back up into the 50s and the next big target above, which was the value we tried to hold on that last move up up here at the 58. If we uh, can't get above the 36, look for them to rotate back down into the 28, 20, uh, 29 area and possibly push down. Watch the 26 level, 2590. If we get below the value, look for them to come down and test the lower side of this, uh, this distribution zone at the CLVN at 2250 and anything below 2250 uh, look for them to come back to the 12.18.60. 12.18.60 is the uh, composite VPOC uh, going all the way back to the uh, to the uh, uh, October 2008. So that's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.